welcome, sir. Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Let's go back, shall we? And reminisce a little bit. Well, the year? First of all, there's no C. Just S-H-A-F-F-E-R. It's the same in French Canada. So it's 1967. I'm growing up in Thunder Bay, Ontario, on the North Shore of Lake Superior. Just kind of coming into my own. And rock and roll is beginning to galvanize me sound of the young rascals coming out of the radio. CJLX, CKPR, CFPA, the radio stations of my youth. So along with the sounds of Sam and Dave, Wilson Pickett, the drifters, the coasters, the searchers, this song seeped in. was the theme of Canada's centennial. And it was a record that was, well, it was ubiquitous at the time. You couldn't get away from it. And it was done by not a singer with a great voice, no Celine Dion here, no Michael Bublé, but a guy named Bobby Jimby, he was a band leader. And I said to myself, band leader? How can a guy like that make a record? And have a hit? I filed that away. Anyway, you'll remember this song. It goes like this. Canada, a two little three Canadians we Now, Eve, pardon my French, bells will ring, ring, ring. Uh, it was the hundredth anniversary. by Bobby Jimby, thank you, and, and I didn't forget, I didn't forget it, I didn't have to Google it, I didn't have to look up the lyrics, I knew it, you couldn't get away from it, and um, there I was in Thunder Bay, and I, shortly after that, I came down here to Toronto, and I attended the University of Toronto, and I graduated with a degree in sociology, and I made that classic deal that a lot of us kids make with their parents. Just give me one year to try show business and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, I'll go back to law school. So here I was with a graduate, undergraduate degree in sociology from the University of Toronto, and I think all of us in the, in the room know where that gets you. <laughs> and I'm working in Toronto and I'm playing nightclubs and I'm playing weddings and bar mitzvahs and anything else 
where they needed a piano player. And, and I used to also accompany friends of mine who would audition for shows. 20 bucks, you could come over to my house and I would work on a song with you and then go with you to your audition and play for you. And this is what I did for a number of girlfriends of mine who auditioned for a certain New York show that came to Toronto in 1972 and it was called Godspell. And um, I was playing for my girlfriend and she sang a song from the show. And Stephen Schwartz was the composer. He wrote uh, Wicked more recently. He was here in Toronto casting, doing the final auditions. And he said, I want to talk to the piano player. And before the end of the day, I had a job in show business uh, conducting Godspell at the Royal Alexander Theater here in uh, Toronto. It was the most incredible thing that had ever happened to me. And I met all my best friends, kids who have remained close and dear friends of mine to this very day. Uh, the cast of the show was incredible. I didn't know it at the time, but it featured Martin Short. It featured Victor Garber, Eugene Levy, Dave Thomas, Andrea Martin, maybe the funniest of all of them, Gilda Radner. Uh, and we talked incessantly about this show. We, it was all of our first jobs in the industry. We couldn't have been more thrilled. And I said to myself, when I get into show business, everybody's going to be like this. Everybody's going to be talented like this. Well, it wasn't the case. This was an unusual confluence of talent. Uh, we didn't know it at the time how lucky we were, but I think the, the world has come to know how talented these kids were. Next thing that happened to me, Stephen Schwartz said, come down to New York. I want you to play the piano on the soundtrack for the movie that we're making of Godspell. And this was my first time in New York. And I'm telling you, I got off that plane and I got into that taxi cab and I'm coming into town and I said, well, where are we now? And he says, Spanish Harlem. <laughs> I said, get out of here. Spanish Harlem. And all I, all I could think of was this. There is a rose in Spanish Harlem. And then I said, where are we now? And he says, well, right now you're on Broadway. And I heard the music. They say the neon lights are bright on Broadway. They say there's always magic in the air. When you're walking, to Broadway, moving to New York. Oh, there you're too kind. I moved to New York, and uh, sure enough, 31 years later, I'm still the band leader on the David Letterman Show, and yes, there's my name, my name up in lights, right on Broadway, 53rd Street. Incredibly exciting to me, and uh, I'm a family man now. I have uh, two uh, marvelous children and a wife who takes great care of them, and, and I find myself in a in a unique position now because I now as a Canadian can look back at my home country from the standpoint of someone outside of Canada and what I see makes me very very proud I see that Canada on the world stage uh, has been impeccable its choices have been impeccable Canada never screws up. Canada always makes the right decision. 
Canada does not rush into anything. I was never so proud as the first year uh, that the U.S. was at war with Afghanistan after that horrible 9-11 attack. I went over there Christmas time with my boss, David Letterman, and we entertained the troops uh, in Afghanistan. And uh, the guys there, we met all the different divisions of the U.S. Army, the Marines, the Air Force, the Army. And one guy said, there's some guys here I want you to meet. And he took me to over to a base on the other side of the Kandahar Airport, which had become a base. And there were the Canadians guarding the perimeter of the Kandahar base, providing that very, very important function. And believe me, when you're inside that base and you don't know what's going to come sailing over those walls, you are never so happy to have the Canadians doing their job, guarding the outside of the, the base. And uh, they were there for a reason, for a very carefully considered reason. Uh, and uh, it made me so very, very proud that Canada was there. Now, Canada isn't everywhere. Canada makes its choices very carefully. But here was an example of, uh, of a choice that Canada made for a a considered reason, and uh, it made me very, very happy. Uh, Canada is, um, well, its humility is, uh, is world-renowned. Uh, Canada gets kidden, kidded a little bit. Canadians get kidded for their politeness, don't they? Oh, they're so polite up there. Oh, hey, 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 I didn't mean to get in your way. Well, it goes a long way, that politeness and that and that humility. And as I, as I was thinking, uh, well, we've got a big birthday coming up, 150 years. How will Canada celebrate? And I said to myself, well, Bobby Jimby did get something right with his song. Well, he got a lot of things right. The song stuck with me. But the lyric that, uh, that came to mind, proud and free. That's what we are up here. And I think that this birthday celebration coming up is going to give us an opportunity to show the world what we're proud of, to show the world this is how we do it. This is what we do, and this is what we're going to continue to do. We are going to have the attention of the whole world at that time. And it's time for us not to be, maybe not to be so humble for once, maybe to stand up and take a bow in front of the world and say, this is how it should be done. Take a look at us, and maybe you can learn something. How are we going to get this message across? Well, you know, I think about myself and what I do for a living, and uh, music is a way to get things across. I'm down on Broadway now doing my thing, but a lot of, a lot of great Canadians did not come down. A lot of great Canadians made an impact musically, without ever leaving our shores. How about this song? American woman. see your shadow no more colored lights will hypnotize sparkle someone else's eyes now woman mama stay away american woman listen what i say well i could go on and on but the point is that this is an iconic song and I didn't know it when I was here in Canada. I thought, you know, it's the Guess Who, eh, from Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's just the next town over from Thunder Bay. <laughs> Turns out it's right up there with Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, and anything else you want to name as far as the iconic heavy metal songs of our generation. Going back a little, a little bit farther, we come across a song that goes like this. 
Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. And through it all, when there was doubt, I bit it off and spit it out. The record shows I took the blows and did it my Ontario, Mr. Paul Anka wrote that song, and he made a worldwide impact with that song right out of Canada. How about this one? Near, far, wherever you are, it's for sure that my heart will go on and on and on. When you want to talk about a vocal performance, how about Celine Dion? and a song that we will never forget. And then there's this one. Hey, I just met you. And this is crazy. So here's my number. And call me maybe. And other girls now, they try to chase me. Well, you get the idea. Call Me Maybe was the biggest record and the most hooky, catchy record that I've ever heard. Carly Rae Jepsen, right here in Canada. So I started to think to myself, it only makes sense, doesn't it? Let's come up with a song. I've done it. Paul Anka has done it. Uh, Celine Dion has done it. Uh, and I thought, let me lay down a sort of a challenge to us Canadians and say, I don't know if it's going to be, you know, getting a David Foster together with a Justin Bieber and see what they can come up with, or maybe it's a worldwide competition like the uh, Eurovision uh, con contest that they have in Europe uh, where they find the best song of the year. I think that uh, Canadians are up to the task does anybody agree with me here that we here in Canada are capable of coming up with something which will impress on the world stage and will show the world that culturally, that politically, we here in Canada know what's happening and we want to show the world. And I think we have an opportunity to do just that. So when it happens and when we find that song, keep in mind this little band leader from Thunder Bay, Ontario. He doesn't really sing, and I think I've proven that this morning. <laughs> but he leads a band every night, and hey, so did Bobby Jimby, and you never know what might happen. So if I may, in my pigeon French, let me just close by saying, Nord. Sud, Est, West, Set, Le Centenaire. Bells will ring, ring, ring. It's gonna be the 150th anniversary. Good morning to you. Mr. Paul Schaefer, thank you very oh, much for coming out today. Thank you.